Though it seems like only yesterday, it's been nearly a week since SN5 gave all of us a reason to celebrate. But today, here on The Angry Astronaut, we have another reason to celebrate, and that's the fact that this channel has cracked 12,000 subscribers. I never would have imagined it possible. So, to celebrate, today I'm going to be releasing one of my older videos, though an updated version of it, and then tomorrow I'll be releasing brand new new material. But the topic today is about one of my favorite subjects and one of my favorite destinations in the solar system, a very mysterious place that almost none of you have watched, at least in terms of the old video that I released some time ago. I think you'll enjoy it quite a bit. And just so I don't keep you all in suspense, the destination is Pluto. And although it seems like a million years since New Horizons paid a visit to this place, we're finding out new things about this planet all the time. And yes, I do call it a planet because I think it deserves the title. And it's a place that has turned our entire understanding of planetary development on its head. And today I'm going to make a case as to why we need to go back right now. So get ready for a very special episode of The Angry Astronaut. In July of 2015, traveling at a speed of nearly 38,000 miles an hour, fast enough to go from the Earth to the Moon in just a few hours, the New Horizons spacecraft began to close in on its objective, the former planet of Pluto. Up to this point, most, including me, thought that Pluto was a boring Kuiper Belt object dead and pockmarked with craters, but as the surface became more obvious and the pictures began to be released, I realized, along with quite a few others, that everything had been thrown on its head. Everything we thought we knew about planetary evolution and the life cycle of planets was just wrong. And the closer we got, the more mysterious Pluto became, and the more mysteries were uncovered, and continue to be uncovered to this day, we need to go back with a larger spacecraft to orbit this strange world. And, although I didn't know it at the time, there would soon be a company and a spacecraft capable of doing just that. The SpaceX Falcon Heavy. SpaceX has become the first aviation rocketry company in history to attempt to launch a giant rocket with a tremendous fart. Get it? Methane, fuel, fart. I... Yeah. No, no, I'm not trying to trigger them all over again. No, I'm not going to do that again, I promise. Well, maybe I will. What did you just call me? Well, what if I just don't give a shit? Yeah, go to hell. Okay, where was I? Um, let's see now. Methane fuel for it. Okay, all right. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the things that SpaceX and its current capabilities is able to do. And as you can see from the introduction, talking about Pluto is something that I'd like to focus on. Because at the time that the New Horizons was launched, 
The Atlas rocket that took it up had a payload capacity that was absolutely pathetic compared to the Falcon Heavy. And we really need to go back. And this time, go back with a probe that has a lot more capability than the New Horizons. Not to say that the New Horizons wasn't a remarkable machine that gave us a lot of amazing information, but it also revealed what is, in my opinion, the most mysterious planet, and yes, I call it a planet, the most mysterious planet in the solar system. One of the most remarkable things about the New Horizon mission was the fact that, after a nine and a half year journey, it almost failed. Just a few days before arrival, the main computer rebooted for some unknown reason, and the New Horizon team had just a few days to get it working again. But when it did start working, the images that we got were nothing short of remarkable. Instead of a lifeless world pockmarked with craters like Mercury or the Moon, we saw a planet that was strangely colored and almost completely devoid of craters. Completely and utterly alien. But equally strange was Pluto's large moon Charon, which was as different from its companion as we could imagine. Not just another Kuiper Belt object, like Pluto, an entirely different world, with a surface covered by water ice instead of frozen nitrogen in a strange reddish patch. And the more we learned about Pluto, the more it became obvious that everything we thought we understood about planetary development and planetary evolution was just dead wrong. Let me try to explain. Planets like Mars or smaller worlds in general, the overall assumption was is that over time, smaller planets would just become geologically dead. Their cores would die and the surface would start to become covered with craters because there would be nothing to cover it up, no volcanic activity or anything along those lines. The only reason that the moons of Jupiter and Saturn are geologically active is because of incredibly powerful tidal forces that create volcanoes on Io or other geological activities on the various moons of the gas giants. All of this made sense to us, but Pluto has none of that. There's no nearby gas giant, nothing that should make it geologically active. It's entirely too old and should not have an active core. And yet, it does. And the more we learned about its surface, the more confused we became. We found geology completely transformed with mountains of water ice as tall as the Rockies and plains of frozen nitrogen. And the surface of Sharon was just as mysterious covered with recently created water crystals, as if made by some sort of active cryovolcanoes. But the surface of Pluto and its strange geology of frozen ice became even more mysterious when we spotted something moving across the Sputnik Planitia, or the white area of the surface. Something large, something dark, and unquestionably moving. Obviously, conspiracy theorists thought it was something alive. Scientists thought otherwise, but that didn't keep people from coming up with some interesting ideas as to what it was. Let's see now, how do I make this into a hat again? Oh, oh, um, no, what I was about to say is, is I definitely don't believe that there are giant snails crawling across Pluto. But what is interesting is that there's something large, as big as a skyscraper, moving across the slushy surface of the Sputnik, Sputnik Planitia. <laughs> Difficult to say that. But in any event, regardless of what it is, 
it's, it's probably some sort of dirty iceberg. A large chunk of water ice is the general consensus, but we can't say for certain. Regardless of what it might be, it's certainly worth investigating. And yet, we can't, not fully, because the New Horizons blew past Pluto faster than any ship we have ever launched. And with this flyby, we're getting nonstop information. As a matter of fact, some of the information is still on the spacecraft, yet to be downloaded. But there's still a lot of other information that we're not certain about. For example, we've discovered that Pluto has an atmosphere. We never even imagined that that was possible. Also, that red patch that I talked about on Charon probably transferred from Pluto's atmosphere. Amazing. And as near as we can tell, the molecules, or macromolecules rather, that this patch is comprised out of are the building blocks of life. So many mysteries. And we definitely need to send another ship, an orbiter, something with the capability of perhaps even sending a lander not only to Pluto, but perhaps to its multiple moons as well. And yet, we don't have anything like that even in the works. Because, after all, it costs an unbelievable amount of money, right? Well, there's one thing that makes it slightly less expensive. I'm sure it's not too surprising that I was going this way. The Falcon Heavy is still the most powerful rocket on the planet, 5.1 million pounds of thrust. When the New Horizons was launched, it weighed less than 500 kilograms and it cost half a billion dollars to launch. By way of comparison, the Falcon Heavy can launch a payload seven times that mass to Pluto and in fully expendable mode for $150 million. This ship should be taking probes all over the solar system. I'm trying to figure out exactly why it isn't. A Pluto probe launched by this vessel could accomplish so much more. It could orbit Pluto, it could carry multiple landers, and so much more scientific equipment. We should be planning a mission with this vessel to carry it right now. Okay, back to the present. As my language has cleaned up a bit and my behavior has become a little less erratic, we have been learning a lot more about Pluto. One of the most startling discoveries is the fact that Pluto's methane and nitrogen glaciers may move on a seasonal basis. It's kind of hard to see Pluto as having seasons, but it does. And as the temperatures warm, no matter how much Minor that movement may be in temperature, these glaciers become very slushy and could become quite mobile, which would be a very good explanation as to what those moving glaciers are, or moving icebergs rather are, in the Sputnik Planitia. Also, on June 22nd of this year, it was announced that not only does Pluto probably have a subsurface ocean, but it also had it from the very beginning. It has been determined from the observations of Pluto's geology that radioactives existed at the center of this planet for a very long time, making it a hot interior world, and that it still is. And so therefore, it has had a subsurface ocean for billions of years, and therefore, the strong possibility of life. Now, 10 years ago, if I had told you that there was a chance for life on Pluto, again, it would have been straitjacket time, kind of like the case with Venus. However, the likelihood seems to be coming stronger and stronger, as an examination of Pluto's atmosphere seems to indicate further evidence of life. 
Spectrographic comparisons between Pluto's atmosphere and icy worlds like Triton reveal a reddish tinge to Pluto's atmosphere that is comparable to Titan's atmosphere that is known to be full of organic particles. Once again, organic molecules indicating the possible presence of life. And speaking of the atmosphere, when New Horizons first observed it, the scientific consensus was that Pluto's atmosphere would freeze and collapse to the surface during the colder seasons. However, that turned out to be false as well, at least as much as we can tell. NASA's Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy revealed that Pluto's atmosphere is far more robust than we thought, with multiple layers that are highly unlikely to completely freeze and vanish no matter how cold it gets there. And the discoveries go on and on, but one thing remains consistent. The scientists who come up with these revelations all say the same thing. We need to send another spacecraft. We don't have enough information, and we need to go back. And we don't have to wait for the Starship. We can do it with the Falcon Heavy, and we can do it right. And frankly, Pluto is so far away, and its moon Charon, which you're looking at right now, that manned exploration seems pretty impractical, at least for quite some time. So really, we just need to send a probe. But since things like SLS are devouring NASA's budget, this is becoming increasingly difficult, even though NASA would very much like to do it. And I have to admit, that really pisses me off. So I think I'm going to go back to my old self now. For example, it probably has a subsurface ocean of liquid water, active cryovolcanoes like many of the moons of Saturn and Jupiter. So does Charon. Why? How? We still don't fully understand any of this. We need to have a more in-depth investigation, especially since there's a possibility that this planet may not only contain the building blocks of life, but if it has an ocean of water beneath its surface, life itself. How much would a probe like this cost, an ambitious one? A couple of billion dollars. Granted, not a small amount of money, but when we compare this to the amount of money that we're planning to spend on the Space Force, and also we could combine this mission with the European Space Agency, the Japanese Space Agency, perhaps even the Indian Space Agency would want in on it, and Roscosmos, we could certainly make it a lot less expensive. This planet has so many surprises and so many inconsistencies. We can't begin to count them all. It should have craters. It doesn't. It should resemble the moon or a comet or something along those lines. It doesn't. Neither does Charon. As a matter of fact, Pluto doesn't even resemble any other planet or moon in the solar system. It's completely different. The most mysterious object in our solar system. And we still aren't on our way again. And we should be. We should be planning our next mission. We have no other options. And we have the perfect vehicle to take us there. The Falcon Heavy. So... If I may be rude here, let's get off our asses and use our intelligence for a change. Use our minds and go out and explore. Explore this remarkable planet that we had no idea was out there, aside from a bright speck in the sky, even in the Hubble Space Telescope. Let's go and explore it. There's no reason for us not to, aside from laziness and an unwillingness to learn new things. I'm the angry astronaut, and stay angry about space.